Women don't really love back. They do, but not the way a man loves. The way a man loves a woman is very different than the way a woman loves a man. And a woman will never love a man the way he wants to be loved. Because we have a way of pedestalizing women. And I'm not 100% against that because it's in our nature, but we have to be privy to it, aware of it, and guard against it. A woman will not pedestalize you, but she needs to respect you. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I have a question regarding love and relationships. I already understand that love begins rational. You vet a person with your mind, seeing if she's a good fit for you and if she would make a good mother. However, what is real love? Is there such thing as real love and how do we discover it? Cool. So I pause for a moment while reading your question because you say that I understand that love begins rational. Well, what I will say is that love does not actually begin rational. Love is actually very irrational when it begins. The experience that we have when we're around someone goes beyond uh, rationale. It's usually very emotional. And when we look at a woman, there are, there are many different things that we're seeing in her that maybe we're not uh, conscious of, right? And science has shown that when, we've, when we first lay eyes on someone, there's this primal instinct to vet them for suitability of procreation. This is why big boobs just draw your attention, right? There's nothing rational about the fact that I see boobs, right? You know, and then I become rational about, okay, let me stop looking at those boobs because now I recognize I'm being manipulated if, by my primal instinct and by her showing those boobs. She should cover that shit up. But that's completely irrational because it's instinctual. And our instinct is that those big titties hold milk and my babies will be safe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or big hips. It's the same thing. She's not going to die during childbirth. Now, you're not thinking that. Because all of a sudden your your member right your is stiffening up, but it, you're not thinking, and he's not thinking, oh, some good old childbearing hips, right? But for some reason you see those hips, and you can't help yourself. But look, that's all irrational. That's all irrational. But but what is required because we're rational beings is to step back and be objective about this, right? We've got to recognize, boom, I'm being stimulated by a primal instinct and, in a way, manipulated by this chick walking around. And this is, I think this is the reason why modesty, need, we need to make a comeback to modesty. Because women who think that they're just, I'm just following the fashions, which she thinks she is. I'm just doing what I like, I'm just wearing what I like to wear. Don't realize, no, you're manipulating men right now. And because women's, uh, their currency is attention, right? How much tension can I get? And it's just in their nature. But we need, just like for men, we, we need bulwarks. We need boundaries against our natural inclinations, right? It's important to have those there because we're not animals. We're not animals. We're higher than the beasts. That's why we can create rocket ships and shit. Uh, women, modesty is a boundary as well too, so that they don't get carried away. We don't get carried away. And so I know, like I mentioned this a couple of times, is a lot of the Muslims here have affirmed that this is how they practice in their culture. But when you see a woman, you turn your eyes down, you turn your eyes away. I think that's a good idea. You see a woman and immediately, because you know that there's that irrational part of you that's going to get stimulated. Just turn your eyes down. Turn your eyes down. And don't give her the satisfaction of, the, of that as well. We, women will change their behaviors when men change their behaviors. We go first. But if every time women are walking around looking this way, we're like, hey, baby, right? They may act like, oh, I don't want your attention. But they're getting exactly what they want. They might not want your attention, but they want the attention. So to say that love begins rational, I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the case. I think love begins with that first. Okay, there's something here that's attracting me. I've even heard, and it, no, this is you got to do your own research, but it's something I heard that when a man uh, 
a man will look for a woman that reminds him of his mother, that has qualities of his mother, and vice versa with the with the woman. She will tend to tend to reach towards men that remind them of their father. Now, in this world where the children are turned against the parents and rebelliousness is seen as uh, something virtuous, it may not be. You know, that's, that's probably not the case all the time, but there's this innate sense. But what, when we have that innate sense, we have that primal drive towards something, we have to be able to rise up out of our balls and get up into our head and say, okay, boom, all right, my lower head thinks boobies, hips, childbearing, right, sex. But then my head head got to come back and say, okay, start scanning, whoop, tattoos, <laughs> right? That's, that's just me, fellas. I see a woman with tattoos and I'm like, uh, 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 right? Especially these women with the, the big sleeve tattoos, uh, uh, right? That just tells me, oh, rebel, you hate your dad. Eh, maybe it's true, maybe it's not true, but I got my judgments and that's my rational judgment. I see tattoos. Or I see the way she's uh, talking to her friends and she got a fresh mouth, she's being loud and she's using a lot of curse words. That's not the kind of woman I want. Or I see her being lazy, right? Like something spilled on the floor and she didn't pick it up, right? I'm like this lazy, nasty girl. So now I start vetting with my rationality, right? So you vet the person with your mind, see if she's a good fit and she'll make a good mother. This is when you start going all over those various things. And we should, have, we should be now conscious. We go from unconscious attraction. Attraction's unconscious to conscious attraction. Conscious meaning, okay, let me, I'm checking her out to see what kind of person this is, right? What kind of character should she have? Big titties and nice hips is not going to cut it, right? And most, you know, most first world industrialized nations have enough nutrition that, the, that she's not going to die in childbirth these days yet. So then the question becomes, right? So you said, you know, the attraction, the attraction is is primal. The attraction is down below, but the, 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 the mental attraction is up above. The rational attraction is up above, right? Just the same thing like where if you are, you know, you're obese or, you know, you, you, you're a diabetic and you're driving by the donut shop. Just because you feel, oh, wow, mm, I smell it, I see it, I want those donuts, you feel that you can't help it. There's that attraction there, but then you you stop with your brain and be like, oh, it's not good that I'm gonna I'm gonna die a diabetic, type two diabetes, it's, 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 it's syndrome X, right? <laughs> right? I got a big lump on the back of my neck. I got to take shots, and it feels like that's not a good way to live. And so you turn yourself, you turn away from it, or you know you're obese and you're gonna die with you know 60 pounds of poop in you because you just won't stop eating. So uh, you use your brain, right? I feel this, but then I use my brain. You gotta do that, you gotta do that. You gotta do that, do that every time. Now, the question he asks is, however, what is real love? Is there such thing as real love and how do we discover this? So that question comes from a, uh, a narrative it's a Disney World, Hollywood fake narrative that makes you believe that this kind of love is some sort of mystical, like Cupid's arrow, boom, right? And that you, there's, and what it really is, is emotional love. Oh, 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 I can't stop thinking about her. A lot of that emotional love is, is lust, mixed with a with a, a form of neediness meaning like validation so it's like lust and validation it's like sex and validation right i want to want and i want to be wanted right and it's very immature it's very immature and that's not real love you don't feel you don't have to feel real love real love has no feeling real love has no feelings real love is a commitment it's what you've decided to do, right? This is why there's no real love today. There's no real love today because there's no commitment. Real love means I'm going to do, and this is above and beyond even a love relationship with you know, your wife. 
This is with your children, this is with your family, this is with just people in the world. Doing the right thing or wishing the well for that other person, wishing well for that other person, even if it doesn't benefit you right away or benefit you at all. That's what the Catholics call charity. Charity is love, but charity is a love for another for the sake of God. And by doing and by having that love, you wish the well, you wish well for that other person. That's what real love is. Real love is wishing well for that other person, regardless of how you feel about the situation. And you commit to that. That's why I use the word commitment, because you've got to be disciplined. Real love requires discipline. Real love requires practice. Love is a practice, right? It's a discipline. You become a disciple. That's a better way to, you know, to, to, to describe the love relationship. It's a discipleship relationship. I'm in this discipline of relationship. Relationship is like a kung fu, right? It's a practice. It's something you're sharpening every day. It's something that when you recognize you got a weakness in it, meaning like, uh, I wish this person well, right? And of course, if it's your wife, you wish her well. Why wouldn't you want to wish her well? In fact, St. Paul says in the Gospels, in his epistles, that your men should treat their wife like a part of their body. And he said, who would treat a part of their body poorly? You will only wish well for, the, for, your, for your arm, right? I only wish the best for this arm because without it, I'll be in pain. Without it, I'll, I wouldn't be as useful. He says, treat your woman and, and consider her as a part of your body. Right. That's wishing well. That's wishing well for somebody and taking care of somebody like they're yourself. Right. But here's because we, here's the other thing that Paul says. He says, men love your men, love your woman like a part of your body. But women respect your husband. Why is that? Why is that that he says men love your woman, but women respect your husband right that's because jesse lee talks about this all the time and so i'm gonna i'm pulling from him but women don't have love women don't it's harder for women to have love the way a man can have love because a man is fulled up a man is already full a woman's looking to be filled a man is already full that's why we ejaculate a man fulls up and we look it's easier for us to love because we want to give, give to somebody, we want to give to something, right? We have this filling up and this giving away. This is natural masculine energy to fill up and to bless. But the woman, she's looking to receive. She's looking to take in. She is a, she's empty on the inside where a man is fulled up on the inside and we reach out and give, the woman is empty on the inside and she seeks out and opens so that she can receive something. And so the man is to love her because, a lo because this love is, a, is, is, is projective, right? I'm going to love you because I'm going to commit, I'm going to and it project it head. Think about, we even talked about it before, rational. The head of the penis can, can be... Uh, teamed up with the head of the head where it's boom i'm going to actively love and this is what we do we actively love down below and up high right and then up high we make a decision the woman just like any you know so people who have their hands open this is why socialism don't work well, people who have a hand open are the worst people to give shit to because they they take it and then they you know what they do a lot of times they scorn the people that they get it from. This is why there's class warfare with socialism. And this is why socialism turns to uh, communism. Because when you're receiving something, when you're a receiver, it, you can not only, you, there's a tendency to have resent because you know that you're empty, you know that you don't have, and now that person that has, has given to me and I scorn them. There's a resentment towards them. And so the woman, at the same time, she's a receiver and she takes from the man. If she doesn't use her head now, she could be very greedy. Take his love 
and then you know and then she maybe she just focuses on her baby and the children and what she has and her comfort and he just becomes a whipping post just get me what i want just do what i tell you right this is what happens with a lot of marriages so don't tell me i'm wrong it happens with a lot of marriages where the, woman, the man because men want to give she takes from him gets what she wants and then just scorns him and, and so many women i've even heard they they um they uh resent their husband so much so that they 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 have like um uh, icky feelings like i forget the word but they're tur so turned off by their husband in the same way that poor people who are who are of this demonic mindset that love socialism they hate the rich they want everything that the rich people have they want to take it away from them but they hate them and so for a woman it's important love is not even the issue so much it's hey have some respect have some respect for this man who's giving not only his load to you right <laughs> right you bust your nut he's just gave you eight steaks and a dozen eggs <laughs> of nutrition giving you his seed he's giving you his essence this is what it's called when a man ejaculates as his essence giving you his essence but in a rightly ordered civilization in a traditional family he's providing for you he's protecting you he wants to do that men want to do that now i get it a lot of you guys you you don't like when i say that because you realize that these women are going to take advantage of you because these women have no love women don't have any love and not only do they not have any love which is fine they don't respect they have no respect for what men can provide and they go around riding cock carousels looking for like the next cute guy or hot guy or alpha guy and even if he pumps and dumps her and can't give her what she really needs, which is a home and a family, she's scornful to the man that can give her the home and the family. That's why when you when the beta need is filled, right, by the guy who, you know, hey, I'm gonna give you a home and a family. And I see this happen sometimes too, man. It's, it's a sad situation. I'm going to give you a home and a family. I'm going to give you these things because I want to, because I'm a man and I love in a projective way. The woman takes and then she's like, oh, 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 he's looking for sex again. Or she gets turned off by him. And then, you know what? 90% of divorces initiated by women. Gone. And she wants to go. So I don't blame you guys. The problem is not so much marriage itself. The problem is no love, no respect. No rational love. Because men could become effeminate too. Because like I said first, love is a commitment. If there's no commitment, then, it's, then you become the addicted lover like I was talking about in the previous question. Well, I already licked this twat. Let me go get the next. And then you're acting like a woman, right? Because there's no love. You're just empty and you're trying to fill yourself up like a woman trying to fill herself up. Women want to be filled up. That's why they get babies. They want to be so filled up that they pop. The baby comes out. And women don't respect men. They have no respect. They have no respect for men. And a lot of times, dudes just ain't respectable. That's what this King program is about anyway. It's about being the kind of respectable, valuable, high value man that these women have no choice but to respect. They might hate you, but they'll respect you. It's better that way. Better that they hate you. Like my mom hates my dad. <laughs> <laughs> they're funny my parents are the funniest couple and they love each other it's no it's a, it's a joke but she can't stand my dad she hates my dad but she respects him and and it works it works don't be afraid to be hated by women because you're so damn respectable right this guy is just too and look i'm not saying put on like your alpha but just be the alpha that you're born to be. I don't need you. Right? And then they'll have more respect for you. Women don't really love back. They do, but not the way a man loves. The way a man loves a woman is very different than the way a woman loves a man. And a woman will never love a man the way he wants to be loved. Because we have a way of pedestalizing women. And I'm not 100% against that because it's in our nature, but we have to be privy to it, aware of it, and guard against it. A woman will not pedestalize you, but she needs to respect you, right? Their love is very different. She, when I say respect, it's, it's a woman's kind of love. A woman's kind of love is respect. 
because she wants an authority. She wants a man that she can look up to. She wants a man that makes her, when I say a man that makes her feel safe, this is not the beta way of making a woman feel safe. This is, I'm afraid of this man that he makes me feel safe, right? Like my wife is afraid of how powerful I am. And sometimes, and she's told me like that it turns her on. It was a time, I was thinking about this last night. I don't know why I was thinking about it, but we were living in a townhouse, right? Down in South St. Pete where there was a lot of crime. And one night we were sleeping and our front door, it was made of glass or there was a glass right next to it, smashed open. And I leaped up, out. we were sleeping. I leaped up out of bed and I went to the, top of the stairs and then ducked down and I shouted I was like get the fuck out of here I'll kill you I'll kill you right I just it just came to me because I'm a fucking beast and so it turned out that either nobody was there was nobody there I don't know if somebody threw a rock and ran I don't know what happened but I shouted and I was like a fucking maniac. I was like, and like first. Per- now I realize that's why I should had a I should have had a gun back then. I got I got guns now because I just come out there and I just start blasting. But at that time, I would have just fucking I would have went down there and ripped somebody's head off. And I got back into bed, and I don't know if she told me this that night or when I came or or maybe the next morning, but she was like, "Oh my god, I was so afraid. I was so scared. Oh," and then she was like. I like the way you were yelling there. Ooh, that made me feel safe. <laughs> and it was like she was melting, like it kind of turned her on, right? So when these women say, I want a man to make me feel safe, these men take it the wrong way in terms of like, I'm not going to try to have sex with her, right? You're safe, right? That means you're not going to pursue me. And you know what a woman, she's not turned on by that. Safe meaning this man is dangerous. That's how my wife feels. And and so there's a level of respect associated with that. Right? This man is dangerous. And I'm a little, I'm kind of a dangerous guy. Like, I could do some dangerous shit. And sometimes I scare her because of, you know, how courageous I am and some of the actions that I take. And I know it keeps her turned on. I know she's turned on because I'm a scary dude. (laughs) So that's really what it is, man. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way, in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. And me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.